Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. And Thursday was the feast of St Ambrose, a man like St John the Baptist, one who was like anything but a reed shaken in the wind. He was a brave man born in the year 340, a turbulent age like our own. At the early age of 34, the people of Milan chose him as their bishop. Yet he was a secular official who had merely gone to solve some dispute between the Arians and Catholics on the doors of the cathedral. He tried to escape this honour, but at the insistence of the emperor, he consented. Shortly after his consecration as bishop, Ambrose wrote to the emperor, Valentinian, a strong complaint against some of the emperor's officials. He replied, I was long since acquainted with your freedom of speech, which did not hinder me from consenting to your election. Continue to apply to our sins the remedies prescribed by the divine law. And St Ambrose continually uh, continued to do exactly that. In turbulent times like our own, he preached and waged a constant warfare in the fields of morals, religion and politics. In the religious field, the Arians were spreading their heresy of denying the divinity of our Lord, saying God made him. In the military sphere, the Goths were overrunning Europe, gaining control. St Ambrose met every challenge with courage. And as soon as he elected, he gave away all his personal gold and silver to the church and then to the poor. He delivered his lands and property to the needy, keeping only a small portion for the support of his only sister. He limited his public worldly affairs in order to devote himself entirely to the care of souls. His personal life was filled with challenging work. He ate frugally and fasted often. He preached and administered in his diocese and engaged with a constant struggle against smooth-talking politicians on one hand and barbaric Goths on the other. For example, one time the Goths captured a number of Catholics and held them for ransom. He melted some gold vessels of the altar to pay the ransom. Arians claimed that it was a sacrilege and reproached him. He courageously told them that it was better to save souls of men than to save gold. St Ambrose was physically brave when threatened with death. You despise Valentinian the emperor, I will cut off your head was said to him. And to this Ambrose replied, may God permit it, then I shall suffer as a bishop should, and you will act according to your kind. On another occasion, he even told off the Emperor Theodosius that he was not allowed on the sanctuary during mass. My Lord, it is lawful for none but the sacred minister to remain on the sanctuary. Be pleased, therefore, to go out and stand with the rest. The purple robe makes princes, not priests. And then the emperor apologised. The same emperor later slaughters many Catholics who opposed his plan in a fit of anger. Our heroic Ambrose condemned his actions and persuaded the emperor to do public penance. Now today's gospel tells us of the courage, the herald of the gospel, the precursor to our Lord's coming, St John the Baptist. What did you go out in the desert to see? A reed shaken by the wind, asked our Lord of him, of which the answer was an emphatic no. He was anything but a shaking, fearful reed. St Ambrose was much like him, courageous morally, physically and personally. Though St Ambrose may see a person with a high exalted office, but he is still a model for us in courage and the faith. He was brave enough to acknowledge his faults, confess them often in the confessional. He was curbing his own personal desires, he did personal penance, giving up his own belongings, fasting, praying, studying, denying self, and working day and night to help save souls. He conquered self-love and self-interest. He devoted himself entirely to those for whom he was responsible. And what an example, not just for leaders and bishops,
but for all the leaders and families, mothers and fathers, who are responsible to the souls God has entrusted to them. As a bishop is in charge of a diocese, a parish priest, a parish, mother and father, a family, must correct the self first, confess sins, make worthy communions in the state of grace, and then get the grace to lead properly, to teach our children to pray and encouraging the prayer life of the child. Pray for the child, ask God to help them as parents, and this can be only done by constant daily prayer. Parents must give good example. If parents show their love for each other, the family will feel loved by others and by God. And what does God call the parents to? As he called St Ambrose, so he is calling parents to holiness and sanctity. God is calling them to love his creation, the gift of life given to them, the means to have a stable environment, one respecting and keeping God's laws and commandments, and correcting one's own life to be able to help others. And like the forerunner of Christ, our saintly bishop fearlessly corrected moral error when he saw it. He told the emperor he was wrong, that he must do penance, that he must right the error he had made. So too parents must correct their children, but they must live with the commandments also. Advent is a time to prepare for Christ's coming, to make a good confession, to make a good Holy Communion. Otherwise we eat and drink unworthy judgment to ourselves. And St John the Baptist did this also by rebuking King Herod, which resulted him in losing his head, but of course saving his immortal soul. Here is an example for daily life, not likely to lose our heads, but it does mean a sacrifice of self-interest and self-satisfaction, a sacrifice of social position and of even money. For us to insist upon the moral law in our families, communities and workplace. But if we want to follow the saints, it means doing that exactly, that which is sometimes most unpopular in the world. Politically, St Ambrose was fearless. He put God's law above the commands of emperors or public officials, or even, one might say, church officials. And we are bound as Catholics to bring about the reign of Christ the King, which means that if the speed limit everywhere was changed to 50, we are bound to obey. But if the government legalises abortion or euthanasia, we must do what we can to reverse it. Violations of the moral law we are bound to expose, oppose, and oppose in any way we can. So our Lord asks us not to be a reed shaken by the wind, bending to the ways and whims of the world. No, to be courageous, not a shaking reed when it comes to right and wrong. But also to be another St John the Baptist, another St Ambrose, another St Charles Borromeo. Patience and endurance is the perfection of charity, says St Ambrose. Thus, we must be courageous herods of the gospel, like St John the Baptist, and patiently endure what comes our way, to be fearless for what is right and uphold God's laws and God's commandments. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost.